Morning everyone and welcome to Compliance Over Coffee. Uh, there are two things that I want to talk to you about this morning. Uh, I will talk in a moment about a new free tool that there is now available for you to be able to use to help you whether you're starting out or whether you're already in the middle of setup or running your business. But firstly, I want to talk to you about um, HMRC. I know, you really don't want to hear about HMRC on a Thursday morning. It's spring, it's bright here, it's not raining. However, there are some things that all of you need to note. Um, you know that I've been talking about compliance and everything around it oh, for many, many years now, probably on stage since about 2014. But there are a lot of people out there still that say, oh, forget about all that Tina Walsh says. It's the law coin to Tina Walsh, a lot of rubbish. Forget about it. You don't need that. Just get going. Just do this. Just do that. You'll be absolutely fine. Well, sadly, the time for that is over because um, there's a, a good chance these days that um, you might well be caught in one way or another. And what I wanted to report to you today was the fact that a business that we had worked with probably 18 months, two years ago, came back to us um, about six or eight weeks ago and told us that they had a letter from HMRC. And they had about 48 hours left before they were having an inspection. And I mean a face-to-face -face inspection. And could we help? They had to send the documents over. They didn't believe that they had the right documents. They had some of the older documents that we'd had a couple of years ago. But um, what people don't realise is, and I pick up on this every day in telephone calls, is that you can do a course and be compliant today and something will happen in the legislation or the way that supervisors see that legislation or interpret it or decide they're working with it in this way, tomorrow will change. You have to stay up to date. You have to know what these people are thinking, what they're working on, what they're updating their guides to say, what you need to know, what you need to research. And I can tell you that that changes on a reasonably regular basis. Now, I can also tell you this, this document, I can't show it you for obvious reasons, is the follow-up from HMRC at the end of the inspection. And it's 11 pages long. And it highlights the breaches in the money laundering regulations that HMRC found during that inspection. And there are a few um, different types of breaches. The major one is the fact that I guess the business had some knowledge, but they weren't up to date. They thought, I'm compliant, I'm legal, that's it, I can forget about it. But no, you can't, because the knowledge that you had isn't the knowledge that you need today. And HMRC have highlighted certain areas that have to be dealt with. And this company has been given two months to do that. So there's a lot of work for them to do in that two month period and a lot of learning. So on the front page is something that I've talked about in this group and something that I talk about in NAPSA is do you understand proliferation financing and I've left a gap there for you to think about it for a few seconds and I know that the vast majority of you don't have a clue what proliferation financing is but proliferation financing is page one on this report you must take appropriate steps to identify and assess the risks of proliferation financing to which your business is subject. It is a legal requirement that you know. 
you must take into account risk factors as a minimum as required under the regulation, your customers, the countries and geographic areas in which it operates, its products and services, its transactions and delivery channels. The, mis the business must, within the risk assessment, identify and assess the risk in relation to the above five factors, not just for proliferation financing, but for a host of other things. One of the other th key things to come out of that is something that I tell a lot of people day in, day out, and we're going to do a hub post for our members in NAPSA. I have accepted that you have a risk assessment built in as part of your controls and procedures or your policy. HMRC have failed this company for doing that. Your risk assessment must be a separate document. It cannot be just, I have a two-step risk assessment and this is what I do with my clients if they are low risk or high risk. That is your control and your procedure. That is not the risk assessment for your business, which is what I've always been saying, and ours is a separate risk assessment matrix. But also, you have to be able to prove that you have fulfilled that risk assessment for each of your clients, not just that the risk assessment sits for your business. You have to have written records that you have carried those checks out for each client, or it's a fail. So I'm sorry to bring all of you guys this news, but the in-depth support, the guidance and the explanations for all of this sits a stone's throw away from you in our national association called NAPSA. And it's £195 plus back for the year. And believe it or not, when you submit your documents, we read them, we assess them, and we give you a report. And because I stay up to date with all of this stuff, I can guide you as to what I feel is up to date. So it, that's the HMRC side and the anti money laundering side. And I want you to go off and think, do I understand proliferation financing? Do I have a standalone risk assessment? Do I understand all of those factors that I need to take into account? Do I understand that now I not only have to assess the risk of my business as it stands now, but also <clears throat> what that risk is when I, I use my controls and procedures to mitigate it, which is something else that's new. So all of the time we are seeking out this information, we are assessing it on NAPSA members' behalf, and we are then adapting our documents and giving guidance to NAPSA members as to how to, set, to stay up to date with the law. NAPSA isn't just about taking your money and you're putting a fancy logo on your website. It's about one-to-one -one guidance and support and keeping you professional and stopping you guys having to worry about staying up to date and have you missed something. Now, the second thing that I wanted to talk to you about was the new tool. And the new tool is a, um, a questionnaire that you go through. And when I finish this talk, Tony will put the link into the comments for you to all go and have a play on it. So it's a calculator. And for those people that come to us and say, how much is it going to cost me to be compliant? I've got this in place and I've got that in place. How much else is it going to cost me? Well, now you can gauge it because the lovely Sarah has built a compliance calculator. If you go through, you put your name in, you put your email address in. There's no charge for this. And you tick the boxes that you've got. And then the calculator tells you approximately based on what you've ticked, how much more it's going to cost you to be compliant. And that's the free tool that we've created for you. So Tony's going to put that in the comment box underneath. If there's any topics that you would like me to cover in compliance over coffee, please bob that into the thread. Other than that, it's nearly weekend. Uh, Easter eggs are out and we actually had one last night an Easter egg. So have a fantastic weekend. I hope it sunshines at least a little bit where you are. And I'll see you again next Thursday morning at the usual time at 8.30. In the meantime, bye for now.